Hi, welcome again to another video on my channel, today I will be creating a rope. I will be showing you guys two different techniques of how to use your rope model to create a good looking rope, you can use either of them, that suits you better and is easy for you. But first if you are new to the channel, then please like and subscribe, so you are always updated of my new upcoming videos. Well let's go to Blender. Delete the cube and the lamp from the scene. Shift A, bring in a circle into the scene. Reduce the vertices count from 32 to 16. Go to edit mode. Rotate 90 degrees along its X axis. Go to the front view. Move it along its X axis in edit mode. Scale it down a bit. Move it close to the world center. Now go to the modifiers tab and select array. And increase the count to 4. But I want the linked duplicates to circle around the origin point. For that I am bringing in an empty into the scene. Now uncheck relative offset and check object offset. Select empty. But nothing happened. Now I am going to rotate the empty 90 degrees along its Z axis. Now you can see they are perfectly aligned. Now I am going to use a screw modifier. Well that doesn't look like a rope so far. But if we change the screw value, we can totally see something happening. It's looking good, but the faces look squished. Go to edit mode, select all the vertices and rotate them 45 degrees along its X axis. It's looking much better. But always check that you have your normals on the outside, you can check it by checking face orientation. If they are inverted you can simply click on flip. It's correct so I am going to turn off face orientation. I am going to play with the screw value a little bit more again. 4 is looking good but for a longer rope 8 looks more reasonable, but it's up to you guys, you can play with all these values, and choose what you like the most. Now shift A, go to curve and bring in a path curve. Scale it up a little. We are going to name our circle, rope. Select the rope, shift select the empty and then the path curve. And then press ctrl P, and set parent to object. You see the path is now the parent of the rope and the empty. Now go to the modifiers tab again and select curve. Select your path curve and choose Z orientation. Now select the path, go to edit mode, select one end point and start extruding. But you can see, nothing is happening. It's because you have to increase the number of iterations in the screw modifier, you can see it's working perfectly. The iterations can even work beyond our path point as well. But it won't be getting curves and will be totally straight. This was the first method, but if you want more control, you have to follow these next few steps to have full control over your rope. I have used undo to remove all the edits I did before. Now go to the modifiers tab and select array again. Move this array modifier just above the curve in the modifiers stack. Uncheck relative and check constant offset. Go to the screw modifier and check the screw value, because you have to use the same value in the constant offset Z axis. Once you done, go to the fill type, and select fit curve and select your path from the curve drop down menu as well. Now select your path, go to edit mode, select the end point and start extruding. You can see you have full control of your rope now, and will automatically create a length duplicate as you extrude your path curve. Now I am going to give a quick material to our rope. Click on new, select any color that you like. and shade smooth. Our rope model is done. Now it's time for using textures and shading to make it look more real. Go to edit mode again. But you can see there are no faces, only the circle vertices that we started from. 
go back to object mode and apply the screw modifier. You can see, there are some weird artifacts in our rope but actually these are just the duplicates that our second array modifier is creating, just click on merge and it's fixed. Now go to the edit mode again. We want to mark a seam but it's best to select the inner vertices, so the seams are not visible. Alt left click on any vertex to select the whole edge loop. Press U and click on mark seam. Drag open another window and select UV editor. Press A to select all the faces and you will see all the faces show up in the UV editor. To unwrap it, select face select mode. Select any face that is a perfect square and press A. Now press U again and select, follow active quads, press OK. Now we can see. All the faces are aligned perfectly. Scale them down a bit. It's looking good. Go to the shader editor. Go to the material tab and select new. Now you have seen me before, how to bring textures into the shader editor, I wanted all of you to learn the long way, and today we will be talking about a shortcut, that will do all the hard work for you automatically, but you have to enable the node wrangler addon for that. Click on the principled BSDF node, and press Ctrl Shift T, now find where you have saved your desired textures. Select all the textures and click on principled texture setup, you can see it has done all the hard work for us and it's totally ready to use. I will drop the link of the texture in the description, these awesome textures have been created by Sasha Unchia, and have made it public for anyone to use. So a big thanks to her. Well we can see the rope model is ready, but it's not looking perfect. A rope doesn't have lines like these. Go back to the UV editor. Back to edit mode. Select 3D cursor. Now rotate the UVs. Now it's looking good. Our rope model is done. We can do a little more stuff to make it even more realistic, but it's for some other day. Now you can select the path curve and extrude and make a nice long rope, and can use it in any scene of yours. Hope you loved the tutorial, will love to get the feedback in the comment box. And please like and subscribe, so you always get notified of my every upcoming video as well. Well this is all for today. See you in my next video. Take care, happy blending.